What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be telling you guys the best ways to level up your character in MapleStory 2. So this guide is good all the way from level 1 through 60, so let's get straight to it. So when you get into the game, you're going to notice you're in a tutorial. The tutorial is going to tell you the basics of the game, and what you want to do is complete the tutorial and get straight to your main quest. Your main quests are going to be the best way to level up all the way to 50, outside of doing alternate things if you would like to. I'm on my main here and if I hit L it's going to open up my quest journal and you can see that I have my level 50 quest here and this took me all the way from level 1 through 50 and this was the quickest. Next we have fishing. So fishing you can start with the maple guide right here. I can't currently open it because I'm in the fishing map but you will see the fishing tab just click that and it'll teleport you in here after you click begin lesson. Once you talk to the NPC, he's going to give you a fishing rod. Find a nice open spot that you can double click your fishing rod in your inventory and then cast your rod. By looking at the amount of XP that I've earned while being in here, I'd say that fishing is a good alternate way to level up, but not over some of the other options that you may see here. After that, we have the music side of things. So if we talk to Stefan here in Tria, you can see the different instruments that you can get and the different music scores that you can get. So I already have one here and I'm just going to demonstrate it really quick. After playing this one time, I earned a good amount of XP. Let's see what I get again. Yeah, it's about 0.12% XP every time this goes off. So that's pretty good just for being in the town playing music. I also forgot to say, if you have auto perform or auto fishing vouchers, you can use those to extend your time and auto play the music or auto fish for you while you're AFK. You can also use your merit, your red, or your blue to buy a certain amount of time to auto perform or auto fish. Up next, we have mini games. So, the mini games are awesome because they give you a great amount of XP. You can be social, and there's all kinds of different ones as well. Let's see how I do on this first question here. I think no. Most people think no as well. All right, let's see what let's see what happens. Are we good? Nice. So depending on which minigame you play and how far you get, you will get less or more experience. Since I only made it to round 1, I only got about 500,000 experience. That's pretty bad, but that's okay. Then we have life skills. If you missed my video on life skills, check that out on the top right. I'll leave a card there. Life skills, I feel like are really underrated and they should really be focused on. You get a lot of XP late game and it's a nice little clutch thing to do when you finished everything else. So after that, we have the housing system. Every day you have a certain amount of XP that you can get from the housing, so what a lot of people like to do is just place the block and then pick it up and then place it again and keep doing that over and over until the XP runs out. Of course you don't have to do it this way, I would urge you to create a house yourself, but this is a quick way to do it if you just wanted to get it done. Moving on through, we have grinding next. So recently they upped the XP that you got for field monsters, and I really like it a lot. It's a nice addition for the quest as well. I don't know the best areas to level up for what quest just yet. If you guys have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. It would really be appreciated. But I do know that you can open up the map, type in say level 40, and it will show you all the monsters that are within that level range. The different ways to get to the different locations would be to either walk, use the taxi stations. If you have premium or rotor walkie talkies, you can use this helicopter for free. Or if you'd like to use mesos, you can call the helicopter for a good amount of mesos. You may have noticed all these blue exclamation points around the map, and these are side quests. Side quests are great to do because they give you a good amount of XP depending on what level you are. If you see the green ones, these stand for dailies or weeklies, and the purple ones stand for events. The next two tips are going to be for primarily after level 50. So once you hit 50, you want to open up your dungeon map here or your challenge map. And you're going to see 0 out of 10 and 0 out of 30 right here. And these stand for your daily dungeons and weekly dungeons that you can do. You can do 10 daily dungeons and you can do 30 dungeons a week per character. When you hit apostrophe, it's going to open up the dungeon directory, which is going to show you all of your recommended dungeons for your level. When you're level 50, what I like to do is hit normal adventure and scroll all the way down so I can see all of the different adventure dungeons that I can do. Complete all of these per day and per week so that you can get your gear to level up and gear up. And now the moment we have all been waiting for is the best way to level up from 50 through 60, and that is by doing world bosses. So in each channel, there's probably gonna be up to a max of about 100 people fighting this world boss at a time. So you're probably gonna be dropping a lot of frames, but that's okay because you're gonna be getting a lot of XP. On the new island, Karkar Island, there are three world bosses. All three of these different world bosses are located in different locations. 
If you click on the locations and look on the right side, it's going to tell you when that boss or that world monster is going to respawn. So if you look at the server time on the top left, that's how you can tell when the next boss is going to spawn. Once you're in a map fighting a world boss, a nice thing to do is look for a party. Looking for a party is a good thing to do is because once you kill one world boss, those people in that party are going to go to the next world boss, which is what you're going to want to do next to get all of the XP that you can possibly get. I noticed that the world bosses on Victoria Island have a much higher defense and lower health, and the bosses on Karkar Island have a much lower defense but much higher health. In my experience, I got the most XP by killing the boss Amadon, I believe the name is, in Karkar Island. He's in Ludari City. That's gonna wrap it up everybody, if you would like more guides from me, slap that subscribe button below as well as the bell notification so that you guys know when I go live. And it has been your guy, Sabity Babity. peace!